All right, hello, I am Dr. Ruckus. And today we are answering the question, with the nerfs from Alchemy, is Goldspan Epiphany still good? We're gonna be playing in high mythic starting around 500 and if you stick to the end, play against the number 18 ranked mythic player. The deck we are running is essentially Yuta Takahashi's World Championship deck. That is not the Galvanic iteration version of this deck. And the reason we are doing that is because one of the nerfs to All Runs Epiphany is that you no longer get two free birds with it if you foretell it beforehand. So if we are not going to have the birds around all the time to close out the game, let's have a couple extra threats. We have four copies of Goldspan Dragon. We have three copies of Smoldering Egg and two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants as our ways to finish out the game. We also have a couple fun evs I threw in to try out some new cards from the set. Very excited about this. One copy of Geist Channeler. Uh, when you play it, you can pick a spell in your hand. It now costs two less to cast. Found out the hard way. This does not work with a foretold All Runs Epiphany. It becomes two less to cast in the hand, but as soon as you foretell it, it is replaced by its foretell cost, which is seven. Um, it does, however, work with Memory Deluge, although you get fewer cards because you're paying fewer mana for it. Uh, interesting. We'll have to play around with this card more, figure out if there's a good home for it. Uh, we also are playing one copy of Unexpected Conversion. It's essentially three mana, draw two cards. Then ditch a card in your hand that is completely irrelevant in the matchup. Ditch Sanderglasm against Control, ditch Negate against Aggro, whatever it is. Then you get rid of all the other copies of that useless card in your deck, and then draw an extra one to two cards. Three mana, draw three to four cards, get rid of all the useless cards in your deck. This card is sweet. We're also playing one, one copy of Absorb Energy. Three mana counterspell, it makes uh, the future cards you play in your hand cost one less to cast if they share a type with the card you countered. Excited to try this out, love the artwork. And then lastly, we got one copy of Kindred Denial. Probably not meta for a four mana counterspell, but anything that says counter target spell, draw a card sounds sweet to me. So we're trying it out. All right, with that said, let's dive right in. All right, first game in alchemy. Let's do this against Vandar, ranked number 312. I guess I decayed a bit from not playing the last couple days. Oh my god. This hand, where is <laughs> all the red? Um, wow. Well, we have two lands. We can play Geist Channeler, potentially make Ulrin's Epiphany cheaper. Uh, I mean, we have all the mana to cast all the spells in our hand. So, yeah. Let's keep it. Okay, Vandar plays a Swamp, Cursebound Witch. That's one of the new cards. When it dies, you can draft a card from its spell book. Play a land tapped here. Turn two, we'll probably play the Geist Channeler. Okay, Voldaren, Bloodcaster, Flying Vampire Wizard. Ah, we got the red source. Perfect. Okay. Drop the mountain down. Yeah, let's try out the uh let's try the Geist Channeler. I think let's do the deluge um just try that out see if that applies to the flashback as well opponent thinking vandar thinking very hard i just watched the uh the league of legends um netflix show and vander is one of the characters i wonder if that's what inspired that okay take two to the face draw a piece of removal have the third land ready to go not under too much pressure yet. Could deluge. <coughs> Could get rid of the Bloodcaster here. Don't need to kill the Cursebound Witch. Don't want to give them whatever card they're trying to get out of that right now anyway. Yep. Let's just blast the Bloodcaster for now. The switch. I don't know from my memory exactly what's in this spell book. Okay. Uh, lifelink, a life, and they create a Blood Token. Shambling Ghast. Okay, still not under a ton of pressure. Doing just fine. All right, they deploy all their threats. I don't even know if I would play a Cinderclasm if I drew it here. Yeah, don't need to play the Fading Hope. Okay, another piece of card draw. Sure. Okay, we get a land in Spikefield Hazard. We get another Deluge and an Egg. Let's take the Egg here. And we will play the Spikefield Hazard as our fourth land red source. Yep, no attacks, did everything back. 
Still looking at that Deluge for two mana. I've got Kindred Denial in my hand now. It's the four mana counter spell that lets you essentially draw a um, draw a card that is of the mana value of the spell you countered. Uh, we can block Cursebound Witch for free here, which is what we're going to do. No need to give them uh, Shambly Gas Treasure. Taking three damage per turn, still not feeling like I'm under any significant pressure. Opponent cracks a blood token, discard a card, draw a card. They drop Infernal Grasp. I guess Kai's Channeler is not worth killing. Opponent thinking, will they? Yep, they will crack the second blood token. Sanguine Brushstroke, dealing some extra damage to me there. Okay, another piece of removal. We have Deluge, we have Smoldering Egg, we have Divide. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, let's give the egg a go. Leave up two mana for Deluge. Go ahead and do it now. Make sure we hit our land drop for the turn. I. Uh, oh, because it only costs two, I only get to look at two. Interesting. I mean, we got exactly what we would have wanted. We got land plus Epiphany. So, can't complain there. I have my video camera in a bad spot, but actually... Uh, Memory Deluge still costs two less to cast, so instead of costing seven, it costs five now. Okay, <coughs> take our free blocks here. Apologies for the coughing. I'm a little sick. Uh, first time in two years I got sick, the week that Alchemy comes out. Very unfortunate, but I'm excited to be playing with these cards for the first time anyway. Thinking, thinking. All right, here we go. Have our six land now. Getting ready to Epiphany potentially next turn. Foretell it here. <coughs> so now we do get the birds. It still costs seven to cast. Uh, that's probably obvious to anyone who's been paying a lot of attention, but in my mind, I was still thinking six. But it, even when you foretell, it does still cost seven to cast. The only thing you get are the additional birds. Okay. No attacks, still biding our time, still not under a ton of pressure, only taking two per turn, two damage per turn at this point. All right, here they come again. Take our free blocks. Yep, egg to the ghast, channeler to the curse-bound witch. Okay, down to seven, down to seven. So land off the top here equals Epiphany plus Egg. Deadly Dispute. Okay. Take more damage from the Blood Artist. Whenever a creature dies, they drain me for one. All right, let's see what they get from the Spellbook here. This will be our first time interacting with Spellbook. We actually don't get to see what it is. It goes straight to their hand. Opponent Thinking plays a, what is that, a six land. Plays another Voldaran Bloodcaster. Whenever it or another non-token creature dies, they get a blood token. And whenever you create a blood token, something else good happens. They got Cauldron Familiar from the Witch's Spellbook. That's pretty funny. I guess Cat Oven is back. No, not really. I, th I think it's too random to consistently put that combo together. But maybe. I don't know. Yep. Let's go ahead and Fading Hope that. If anything, we don't want a flying block around for when we potentially epiphany. All right, and there's the land, exactly what we needed. Perfect. Land epiphany. Is it still good? Is gold span epiphany still good? And the answer is, yeah, it's still pretty good. Uh, attack all, baby. Okay, they take a block there. I don't think they can drain me out from here, even with the familiar. They only have one treasure mana open. We're going for the win right now. Yes, that says whenever, I believe, itself or any other creature dies, um, they drain for one. Let's do it. Attack all. No blocks from the opponent here. Down to 12. Epiphany. Two damage to the face. Down to 10. And, yep, that's game. All right. <laughs> First game down, we beat number 312 Vandar. 
ranking up to 406 ourselves. All right, game number two <laughs> against <coughs> Vandar once again. Um, I guess not that many people are queued up right now. Yeah, this is a keep. Got some lands, got some removal. I know he's playing this weird mono black, you know, which is, what is it? Not which is oven, whatever which is coming is. Um, yeah, we'll start on the hall of the storm giants here. Have that come in untapped. Vandar plays Voldar and Bloodcaster again. Okay, I'll take one. Okay, drop a mountain, have Dragon's Fire available as needed. Not sure if he has um, Deadly Dispute, so we'll go ahead and take that out now. And creates a Blood Token. I'm excited to try this Unexpected Conversion out and Kindred Denial. Um, haven't gotten to play either of those new spells yet. <laughs> Hostile? What is it? Hotel? Oh man, he's doing some janky stuff here. Um, good, good for him. Good for him. Okay. Saxon Eye Twitch fetches probably in Environmental Sciences. Let's see. No, fetches Pest Summoning. Okay. So this would draw two and potentially ditch cards that are not useful in this matchup. So yeah, let's let's give this a go. Okay, we'll go ahead and drop the Kindred Denial here. I don't think we need the four mana counter spell. See if we can get anything more useful. There are no more copies in my deck, so I don't have to remove any other cards here. So we'll just skip ahead. I'm recording this after the fact because I screwed up my mic the first time. So I, I apparently was confused in this moment as to what to do. Mm -hmm. All right, another copy of Dragon's Fire. Not sure if that's any more useful than the counter spell would have been, but that's what we got. We have plenty of things to do at four mana now. So I think we'll go ahead and play the land on red. We've got both our colors now. Uh, probably want to hold up Deluge here. Taking three per turn from the opponent. Yeah, let's just pass here. Almost certainly Deluge, potentially could Juari plus Dragon's Fire. Opponent plays another Hive of the Eye Tyrant, comes in tapped. Okay, they attack, not under any pressure here. Let's go ahead and take three, cast a Luge, unless they're the good Juari target. Are they going to sack another creature to the Hostile Hotel? Hostile, Hostile, Hostile. Eh, that's what it is. Uh, <coughs> awesome. Okay. Do they have anything else to do this turn? Looks like they might crack the blood token. Nope, nothing. All right. Deluge away. Look at the top four cards. Add two to my hand. Two Allruns Epiphany and a Solundi Vision and a Geist Channeler. So I'm thinking about <coughs> what I want to play next turn. We'll play a land. We'll have five mana available. We could Deluge a second time. Again, we could hold up Jewari and Dragon's Fire. We're going to go ahead and take the Geist Channeler here. I think at this point, again, I'm recording after the fact. I think I did not realize yet the Geist Channeler um, does not lower the cost of a foretold Auron's Epiphany. And I believe that's because it says this spell costs you less to cast, but Auron's Epiphany foretell says this is the foretell cost. So I go ahead and foretell it, and uh, my camera's in a, a poor position, but it still costs seven to play, not five. Okay, go ahead and play the Jory Disruption now. I have an extra one in my hand if needed. So we cannot all runs Epiphany next turn, but we're still doing okay here. Infernal Grass kills a Geist Channeler, no problem. I'm rereading it because I'm like, what? Why didn't <laughs> why didn't it affect my foretold card? Yeah, I guess it does not. Opponent pays a swamp. I'm reading the card. Yep, it's got that foretell cost on it. That must be why it, it does not apply. Although I have seen one bug, I think. I think my opponent had the Captain Earnhardt, or whatever, the two mana white 1-1 one, one double striker. And the first card I drew on a turn, it was like a um it was like a Skyclave app or something. And I'm pretty sure it still costed three. So there's a potential for a bug. I could have just messed up, but I don't know. 
Here we have five mana available, currently taking five per turn. We can foretell the second epiphany here, hold a deluge or dragon's fire plus drawry again. Also have fading hope available as needed. We do not have any threats to go with our all ones epiphany right now, other than the birds themselves. Okay, opponent pitches infernal grasps. That's the second time they've done that in this matchup between us. I guess we're doing best of three right now. That's what's happening with no sideboarding. I think we're just the only ones playing alchemy and mythic right now. I mean, this is a, you know, this is, I think this was noon on uh, the 9th or the 8th, whatever day it came out. Okay, curse pound witch again. Another hostile hostile. Opponent's looking to sack one of these. Maybe he wants to sack the witch, get a card drafted from the spell book. Okay. Creates another blood token. The witch, when it dies, drafts something from the curse bound witch's spell book. Reading the hostile here. Sacrifice a creature, put a soul counter on a hostile. If there are three or more soul counters, remove this counter, just transform it, untap it. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, culture and familiar. I'm thinking about what the opponent could do here to burn me out from six, which is not that far away. Okay, powers up the hostile. It's a three seven creature. We're going to go ahead and deluge here. Okay, there's a dragon and a river glide pathway. If we play dragon at five, then we would have potentially four mana total from that, including the treasures and another land I could play next turn. We could also play the egg, and then, let's see, then we'd have five mana left over. All right, we'll see if we can stall for one turn here. We play a land source. I'm very carefully counting my mana, making sure I, I don't mess this up. But I have seven total, and I want to be able to Epiphany. And I'm trying to figure out if if I can survive a, an, an extra turn without them killing me. I do have Fading Hope. I do have Dragon's Fire. I have plenty of ways to stall for one more turn. The Creeping In itself also has the ability to apply extra burn damage. All right, let's go for the first epiphany. We now have two blockers if needed. Okay, we have one more land now. Now we can, now we have enough mana to dragon. That only gives us five total this turn. Two from the treasure plus two more lands. Okay, five mana available. We will <coughs> deploy the smoldering egg which could block the familiar. And then we have three mana total. So we could fading hope plus dragon's fire here, which should be enough to survive the turn. Then on the flip side, we can epiphany and we'll have plenty of damage between gold span and the smoldering egg to finish off the job. Opponent figure out how to play this. They try to move to combat. I'm going to Fading Hope the Creeping in first because I believe it has a when this attacks triggered ability. Okay. Don't need another land at this point. We'll take any more spells, although we may not need it to close out this game. All right. Now that declare attackers, we'll go ahead and torch the Bloodcaster. Okay. And we have three blockers available. Go ahead and target the gold span just in case they, um, I don't know, have some bizarre buff. Probably did not need to do that. Okay, creates another blood token. We'll take our blocks here. I am worried about being burned out by something I, I don't know very well. So I'm thinking carefully about these blocks. So we'll go ahead and take both. Make sure we stay alive. I think so long as I Epiphany here, I'll be just fine. OK, 
Okay, they learn. What are they going to learn here? The mascot exhibition. They only have six mana. Now they have the seventh mana. All right. So there's a mascot. So I need to remove the blocker, ideally, and see if I can close out this game now. Okay, we'll go ahead and Epiphany first, then we get the Smoldering Egg leveled up. Okay, now we have an Ashmouth Dragon. Have divide by zero. They scoop, anyway. I could not divide a token, I think I was, I had forgotten that. It has to be mana value one or greater. All right, up to 323 Mythic. 2-0 and oh so far in our new alchemy journey. Game three of alchemy against a non-Vander opponent, Infernia. Got four lands here, an expressive iteration. Can foretell all runs Epiphany on two. Looks great to me. I Twitch, everyone's playing mono black today. Um, between the the previous game and this game, I subbed in a couple copies of um, Cinderclasm. I was like, wait, where's mono white? Surely there must be mono white on this ladder. Okay, go ahead and play the mountain here. Foretell Epiphany. Should be able to use expressive iteration next turn. Ideally grab a land, add another spell to our hand. Zombie. Here come some pressure, but not all the pressure. Deadly Dispute, draw two, make a treasure. They grab Pest Summoning. Okay. Cool. Back in Nab the Jadar very easily. Let's start with an Expressive Iteration, see if we can hit a land here. And we can. And we'll take the Gold Span to our hand, I think, here. We will, either way, be able to grab the Red Land. Well, we already have a Gold Span. Let's go ahead and grab the Thundering Rebuke, just in case we need more removal. We can play this on Red. Use Spike Filled Hazard on the Jadar. And keep the pressure off a little bit as we build up to our gold span epiphany combo. Opponent on some kind of Golgari sacrifice. Plays at Felsinger, sacks the zombie, draws two cards, loses two life. Okay. That means no pressure for us. That's fine with us. Storm Carve Coast here. Go ahead and rebuke the Fell Stinger. Hold up Jawari as needed. Let's see if we can get a nice juicy Loth target. Well, they have six mana available now, so that's not going to happen. Pest summoning? Sure. Go ahead. Three mana left. Second Jadar? Sure. Go ahead. All right. We could drop a dragon here. We could iterate. We also have unexpected conversion. There's nothing really dead in our hands right now for this matchup. But, <coughs> nothing wrong with dropping the dragon. If they don't have removal, they're going to feel it next turn. Alright, Meat Hook Massacre for four. Okay, sweeps the board. We have plenty of card draw to rebuild from this. Drop down to 11. Draw Fading Hope. I think we will start with an iteration here. Okay, all land. Put that into the hand and pick one of these to play this turn. We will now have five mana available for the rest of the turn. Let's go ahead and drop our first unexpected conversion. Draw two, then can get rid of the most Lucius card in the mass. We'll go ahead and drop Jawari because they already have enough mana that it will likely be irrelevant. And we'll go ahead and remove the rest of our, from our deck. We don't need those anymore. Draw one more. Feels good. Three mana, draw three, remove cards that are irrelevant at this point of the game. Feels really good. We also have a spike-filled hazard available in case they have another Jadar. Okay, Field of Ruin all. Sure, you got it. Grab another blue here. Opponent has six mana available. Goes for another Fell Stinger. Um, yep. <coughs> it's fine with me. Exploit it. Draw more cards. I guess their hand is not where they want it to be right now. Okay. 
Okay. We've got seven mana right now. We could use iteration. We could drop the gold span and build more treasure. We could potentially do both here. We also have divide by zero. We can somewhat protect the gold span with divide by zero, although we'll likely be able to replay whatever removal spell that is. Let's go ahead and drop the dragon now. Get in for four. Create a treasure token. Okay. And again, I think so long, right? You know, we can dodge Lolth here with divide by zero. We could dodge um, Blood on the Snow. <laughs> Tox roll the corrosive. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, good for the opponent for playing that. Unfortunately, that spells their doom, but um, good <laughs> good, good for them for, for, for going for that. That should pretty much be game, but we'll grab teachings uh, just in case. But land epiphany should just about do it, as always. So this is game three now. Uh, we've only played... Essentially, mono black, different variants, uh, but the gold span epiphany is still going strong. Choosing to start with an iteration because we have enough mana regardless. We should be able to um, cast epiphany even, even when starting with the iteration. Okay. We have eight mana available. Attack with the gold span. Now we have 10. Go ahead and Epiphany. Let's see if that is scoop worthy. Not yet, but soon. And we're going to have this spike field hazard here for the juicy uh, dome the face for one point of damage. All right. There you go. <coughs> Gold Span Epiphany is still good. Two seventy seven mythic. Let's go. All right, game number four. We are at rank two seventy seven, facing We Was Wizards. This is a keep. Three lands. <coughs> iteration on two. Sorry. So smoldering egg on two. Iteration on three. Is our default plan here. Opponent has already mulliganed once. They mulliganed twice. Okay, I'll take it. Start with Mountain. All right, we're up against Gruel, potentially. Rockfell Veil. Vale. Smoldering Egg on two. Setting up to expressively iterate on three. Rahilda. <coughs> All right, I'm excited to see this card. It's a kind of like the new Robber of the Rich, but it doesn't have haste, and it's not when you attack. It's when you deal damage. But I'm excited to see this card in action for the first time. We'll add Gold Span to the hand. Cinderclasm of the library, take the tap land. All right. Opponent thinking, drops a mountain. I'll take the block. They could have, you know, some kind of removal spell here, but that's all right with me. I don't want to give them the free card if, if I can avoid it. Tenacious Pup, also first time we're seeing this card. Uh, the next creature he plays, which is now this one, comes in with a plus one, plus one counter, as well as, I believe, Vigilance and Trample. We're reading where Hilda here, just making sure if it's when they, what it takes to flip. So they get double strike if they flip. That's the only change in text, I believe. Go ahead and start with iteration here. Smoldering Egg up to four counters on its way to seven. Could grab a second dragon or the Shatter Skull Smashing here. We only have one red source. We'll take Dragon to the hand. Um, take the island there. That was probably a mistake. I probably should have taken the Shatter Skull Smash in to get that second red source. We now only have Negate open this turn, which is unlikely to have a target. Okay, opponent attacks, makes extra mana from the Kessig Naturalist. Go ahead and block Rahilda, prevent them from getting that trigger to take a card off of my deck. Still no removal. Egg seems to be staying strong. And they flip to nighttime. Okay. Well, we are in need of that second red source. Definitely wish I had taken the Shatter Skull Smashing when I had the chance. 
we could use the conversion here, drop the negate, which is almost certainly dead in this matchup. We will have to discard down to seven at the end of this turn as well. Tap the three blues manually, make sure we don't use up our red source. Hopefully we can Thundering Rebuke here as well. Okay, we convert the Ashmouth Dragon. Go ahead and exile Cinderclasm, does not feel super relevant right now. And we'll pop the other two Cinderclasms out of the deck. Feels very good. So this is now a draw th three mana, draw three. We get a Spike Field Hazard as well. Okay, there goes Storm Carved Coast. And we'll go ahead and get rid of the Lord with the Thundering Rebuke. And Ashmouth Dragon, two damage to the face. Okay, and because we played two spells that turn, we flip back from night to day, and now um, all of our opponent's things are a little bit weaker. Okay, let's get in for four. Not enough pressure not to. Got to close out the game at some point. Well, flips back to Rahilda. We, we could have left the Ashmouth around to block, but okay, we got to close out the game at some point, and I think now we have them on the back foot. Okay, Tobalar, Dairoil, a little bit punished for not leaving back a blocker. They now get to draw three cards here. Two cards plus a Dragon's Fire. Dragon's Fire will not be big enough to kill the Ashmouth without a second card here. Okay, we're now ready to deploy a sixth land. We have the Ashmouth power. We have the Dragon. We're still not under lethal pressure at this point. We could get in for eight if we play the Goldspan Dragon. Create a treasure, which would open up a spike-filled hazard. Let's do it. Swing in for eight. Leaving three mana open for negate and or spike-filled hazard. That was a mistake the way I did that. I meant to use the blue and the red. <laughs> I'm just hoping that it um, does it correctly for me here, but it, it will. Okay, we leave the one mana open. We'll go ahead and knock down Tovalar here. One damage from Spike Field and two damage from the Ashmouth Dragon. That turns off their draw engine. We should be able to block Rahilda with the second egg at this point and just take one from the Tenacious Pup. They now <coughs> need to remove both, or at least one of the two flying threats at this point. Attack all. I think they're probably open to draw something with Rahilda here. We'll go ahead and block. We have lethal unless they can remove one of the dragons. They do not, so they scoop it up. All right. <coughs> I think that was game four. Going well so far. Not that we're up against, you know, top tier stuff, but rank number 237, Mythic, Alchemy, Goldspan, Epiphany. Okay, Salted Caramel, rank 1268. Got enough land. Potentially have a Smoldering Egg on two. I think we'll go ahead and start with the Spike Field Hazard tapped. We can then play Hall of the Storm Giants untapped on turn two and play Smoldering Egg. Looking at Shattering, Shadow Soul Smashing as a land here. Mulch, okay. So, wow, Cultivator Colossus. Oh, baby. All right, this is a deck right here. Salted Caramel, doing it. Go ahead and drop Smoldering Egg on two. Have Thundering Rebuke available if they play a creature. Scoot Swarm. It's only a 1-1 one -one now. Every time they play a land, it generates an additional 1-1 one -one green insect creature token. I think we'll go ahead and get this <coughs> tap land out of the way. And Thundering Rebuke, the Scoot Swarm. Just get rid of it before it generates additional threats. Uh, that card can go nuts if left unchecked. Play the Mountaineer. Probably should have played the Shattered Skull Smashing. Not sure I will need it this early in the game. Opponent plays their fourth land. Geist Pack Alpha. When it dies, I can get a permanent card with mana value equal to... Uh, I think I think the the mana value of the alpha. I think they can get a four drop. Go ahead and play an island here. Second smoldering egg. We now have 
negate available, although it's unlikely we will be able to use it in this matchup. Hollow Hedge Wrangler. All right. Five mana, six, six. Another new card. Let's see it. Okay. Attack for five. We'll take it. No blocks. All right. Our first epiphany here could go land dragon attack and potentially epiphany next turn, although we do not have it foretold yet. But epiphany by itself will level up both the smoldering eggs to the Ashmouth dragon, which is enough to potentially close out the game very, very quickly. Okay, let's see if they have removal for the gold span dragon at this point. That's what they really need. Reading the Hollow Hench Wrangler again real quick. They're looking at the gold span. Yeah, it doesn't make treasure when you target it anymore, only when it attacks. That's the nerf to it. Okay. Pass the opponent. Play their sixth land here. Potential attack for 11. Ashaya, Soul of the Wild. It does not have reach. Despite looking like a tree, it does not have reach. It cannot block the flyers. Okay. Go ahead and take 11 here. If they don't have anything else, Epiphany, attack for 12, attack for 12 again, or 14 the next turn. <coughs> oh, actually just 12, because we don't get the birds, because we did not foretell it. But this levels up both smoldering eggs, is now transformed into Ashmouth Dragon. Attack for 12. The opponent will likely scoop. We have one more turn of this. They need a one mana instant, you know, fight or bite spell from green. Okay. We now take our second turn from Epiphany. All right. That's game. This is now game number <coughs> five in a row. I think we have won with Goldspan Epiphany and Alchemy. Rank number 237. And we move up to rank 207. Mythic in Alchemy. Game number six against the Lime Trout. Number 18, Mythic. Let's do it. Got plenty of land here. Some of them tap lands. Have expressive iteration for turn three, potentially. Start out with Shattered Soul Smashing. It's one of our only red source. Actually, we'll go ahead and drop the second of the Juari Disruptions. Not sure what we'll need in this matchup yet. All right, Voldaren Epicure. One mana, one, one, deals one damage and creates a blood token. Turn two, we need to set up our red source. We'll go ahead and play the mountain here. Still not sure if we'll need the Shatter's Soul Smashing. Pass the opponent, hold up Jawari Disruption. Blood Thirsty Adversary. Yep, we'll go ahead and counter that. Opponent has no mana to pay the tax. Spell is countered. Take one to the face. Turn three, we'll go ahead and use Expressive Iteration. Dig for a land and a spell. We'll probably take the Spike Field Hazard as a land and maybe the Cinderclasm to the hand if they're playing a bunch of 1-1s. Geist Channeler could be a good blocker, though, as well. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take Cinderclasm to the hand, Geist Channeler to the library, and Spike Field Hazard as our land for turn. Opponent thinking. How best to go face in their mono red burn deck. Lime Trout, number 18, Mythic. Okay, sacks a blood token, discards a card, draws a card. Plays a tap land. Probably not the turn they wanted there. Play with fire to the face, scry one. Scry zero to the top, one to the bottom. Yeah, their hand is definitely not what they want it to be, clearly. Okay, we have Memory Deluge and Kindred Denial open at this point. Let's see if they play anything worth countering. Uh, yeah. That's what counting to me. So because it's three mana, we will seek a card with three mana from our deck to our hand. Ends up being a divide by zero. Yeah, he says nice. Yeah, playing some new cards. Thank you. Thank you. Checking it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, we could unexpected conversion here. Then we can hold open Cinderclasm still. So what do we want to drop off? We could drop to Deluge, cast it later. I mean, all these cards are okay right now. We could drop off Shatter Skull Smashing, actually. We have plenty of land. 
might not particularly need it. It's pretty expensive. Yeah, let's drop that off. Just draw a fresh card. I have none in my deck, so I just click past it. And we get the new counterspell, Absorb Energy. Man, Unexpected Conversion is good. Three mana, draw at least three. Drop off your most irrelevant card. That card is sweet. I think every blue control deck probably needs one to two of those in it. I think it's a very, very good card. Okay, Reckless Stormseeker Part 2. We don't have a counterspell this time around. Could Cinderclasm. Ooh, walks right into the Cinderclasm. I will take it. Take it all. And he pumps that one instead of the Reckless Stormseeker. Goodbye, friend. Cinderclasm it is. Ooh. Okay. On turn six now. Getting ready to play our six land. Go ahead and play this River Glide Pathway on blue. Gold Span to the Faith to the face. Have three mana available, ready to hold up either Divide by Zero or Absorb Energy. I feel like we are closing in on this game at this point. Opponent thinking. Four mana available. Den of the Bugbear available. Plays a fifth land. Creepy Puppeteer. That's one of the new cards too. Four mana, four, three, haste. When it attacks, um, if only one other creature attacked with it, you can turn that into a four, three. This is a very, <coughs> very good target either to divide or absorb. We're going to go ahead and divide it now. I'm not sure if that was the perfect timing or not. Because now the uh, Stormseeker can pump itself. I'm not sure if there's a slot in there where the Stormseeker could have targeted, you know, something else potentially. And then I could have bounced one of them. And they scoop it up. All right, number 18, Lime Trout. Okay, wow. Rank number 157, Mythic. Playing Goldspan, Epiphany, in Alchemy with the nerfs. All right, some post-game thoughts. Uh, yes, Goldspan, Epiphany is still good, even with the nerfs. I did not play against any top tier decks today. I did not play against Mono White. I did not play the Mirror. I did not play against Blue White Control. But I think you can just see from the games I played that yes, the combo is very much there. It is still very good. Uh, if you're worried about not having the birds as pressure, Smoldering Egg is plenty of pressure. Smoldering Egg into Epiphany gives you the 4-4 automatically and the extra turn. That's that's all you really need. Um, it does hurt that the foretell cost is 7 still. Even when you foretell it, it still costs 7. That part, I feel more than the birds. Some other notes. Um, Geist Channeler does not reduce the foretell cost of Epiphany. It does work with Memory Deluge, but that also means you dig for fewer cards. Uh, unexpected Conversion is sweet. Three mana, draw at least three cards. Remove all the cards in your deck uh, that are bad in the matchup. I think every blue control deck is going to want at least... Probably, probably one to two of these is right. Absorb Energy, I did not get to play, sadly. I'm very excited about this card. We'll try it out another day. And then Gindra Denial, I love this card. Four mana, draw a card. Ah, it's sweet. It's sweet. I don't know if it'll ever be good enough to be meta, but I really like this card. So yeah, um, if you love Epiphany, you can still you can still play it. Um, if you hate Epiphany, I, I think it'll be around a while longer. But if anything, the uh, you can't play it on turn six anymore without treasures. So if you hate Epiphany, just know that it is a little harder to pull off. And if you bring removal, if you're playing, you know, mono white or mono green, and they have to play Smoldering Egg to add threats, then your removal will have targets. So that's good for you. Anyway, I'm Dr. Ruckus. I hope you enjoyed this game. I'll catch you next time.